So hi, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you so very much to uh, you know for joining us today in the session. Today we have uh, with us uh, Ajay Goel. Ajay is the VP and Head of Engineering for Software and Digital at Altron, and he has over 30 plus years of work experience in the IT industry. He uh, currently his role, uh, you know, whilst he will talk about it himself, but it involves helping customers in their digital transformation journey and leads a lot of projects on uh, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, IoT and big data. So he's the man himself who's going to speak to you about what it really means to be right in the thick of uh, technology. Ajay did his engineering from uh, DCE which is the uh, Delhi College of Engineering, and he did his MTech from IIT Delhi, followed by an MBA qualification from IMA. He's uh, representing Ultron at NASCOM currently, is on the board of um, an incubation foundation, and also member of the executive committee at IEEE Delhi chapter. He's an avid speaker on leadership and technology, interacts very, very often with young minds like you, and uh, uh, is probably almost at par with your energy levels and enthusiasm levels, especially when it comes to talking about uh, technology. So thank you, Ajay, for being with us here today and uh, welcome to this uh, session. We also have with us uh, one of our own. We have uh, uh, Ayushi, who is uh, a BTEC in computer science and engineering, and she's from the 2018 uh, batch and she is currently working as a data scientist at IBM Bangalore. A little later, we'll also have Professor Sudeep Sanyal join us, uh, and he'll, he'll uh, have, be part of this conversation as well. So without taking too much time, I'm going to take this back to Ajay and Ayushi. Ajay, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your journey. All right, uh, so first of all, uh... Thank you, Monisha, uh, for inviting me for this wonderful event, right? Uh, it's always a pleasure to interact and interface with young people like you. And uh, I know it's a pandemic, so we can't meet face to face. And I love doing that. I mean, coming and meeting people. And But I assure you, maybe sometime again, we'll uh, plan it. Uh, as Monisha talked about, uh, I did my engineering. I did my master's. Uh, then I did my uh, MBA, which was a part-time one. And uh, then I, I've been with the company for 22 years, uh, last 22 years. Now that company has changed name for five times, but I've been there, right? And uh, so, of course, a lot of learning. Uh, there has been a lot of changes in my career in this last 30 years. And uh, um, if you ask me, that change has been one constant, and I love it. The first time it was difficult, uh, but uh, then I love it. And I would say that is what is the need of the art. So, uh, so it's exciting to talk to you. Uh, I, uh, wherever you are, uh, some of you may be at campus, may be at home, uh, in different parts of India, I'm sure. Uh, so, but look forward to uh, more interactions ahead, uh, Monisha. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ajay. So, uh, Ayushi, of course, you're one of our own, but why don't you give us a, a quick recap for all uh, those who are in the session who may not know you as well. Why don't you give us a quick summary of uh, yourself? Uh, yes. Thank you, Manisha. So, hi, everyone. Uh, hi, hello, Ajay. And hi. Uh, today, uh, I'm here to talk to you guys. I obviously, you know that I've graduated from NIIT University. I have been involved with uh, IBM, working for IBM for the past three years now. And it's uh, uh, still continuing and I don't wish to change per se because I love the job. I am uh, loving the way uh, uh, IBM works and uh, the opportunities it gives me in the field of data science. I had uh, chosen data science as my area of concentration in my third year and I have done quite a few projects that we might get a chance to talk to about and in my uh, college and in the industry practice that our college provides and that you kind of helped me a lot in building my career till date. So yes, let's uh, talk. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Ayushi. So uh, Ajay, now we have these two extremes. We have you uh, with the, so many years of uh, work experience. You're almost like this master in technology. And you said that you've been with one organization for the last uh, so many years consistently. 
but uh, uh, you know when you were in college what were your aspirations were you sure this is the path that you're going to take uh, you told us about your education you had such a fabulous a grade uh, qualifications from the best of institutions but did you know at that point in time that this is where you want to be and how was technology very different at that time when you were you know studying yeah yeah <clears throat> good question monisha and uh, i mean this is interesting for me and i'm sure uh, you'll figure out maybe 10 or 20 years later a lot of you students who are there that it's going to be very different so when i was doing my engineering i was doing my electrical engineering and i was sure uh, that i am going to continue as a electrical engineer i'll work on transformers i'll work on generators i'll work on uh, power generating plants i used to love electrical engineering and i used to hate computers just to add that and why i used to hate computers because back in 86 we had a mainframe uh, we had to work on fortran programming languages we'll get slot half an hour from 1 to 130 and the mainframe used to painfully slow i mean that's the era that and pcs were very few in 88 so i used to hate computers but as luck would have it and i had some aspiration i told you right electrical engineering was my forte and i was i felt i was very good at that Uh, but then as luck would have it uh, immediately after my engineering i joined mtech and that to in computers and i told you i used to hate that right but it was interesting i mean it was totally and this was the first step of my change and i talked about my journey uh, so change from electrical to computers uh, that was one part of journey so in terms of aspiration when i joined mtech computers i loved it right i i felt i mean why i did not do it earlier Uh, so I had an aspiration to work on computers to look at what um, what kind of work. Interestingly, in '89, I worked on my thesis, which was uh, something to do with AI. I mean, AI was not that much used; it was more in academic circles, but something like that. And if I look at today, today systems provide all that. What I was trying to do in my MTech thesis. So, in terms of my aspiration, I was looking at. Uh, Uh, what difference can i create in working with computers and making impact in people like very simple aspiration and i can tell you i mean aspiration can change uh, i had some aspiration in college within one month i realized it did not work out right then i joined my mtech computers i had some aspiration and uh, uh, and i joined a startup just to add that immediately after my mtech i was employee number 1 so i had aspiration i'll have big office i'll do something fun to things the moment i joined that office Uh, the first thing i bought was uh, toiletries and computers right i mean i was employee number 1 in india uh, and i i did all that so i was there i learned a lot of things then i joined see dot and again i used to hate computers were good but i used to hate networking now in uh, see dot i was building a telecom switch and networking was part of that right uh, so it was again difficult it was a change for me i had to learn a lot of things uh, but coming to the aspirations in my view uh i mean some of you surely and some of the bright students uh, will surely have some aspiration that this is what i want to do and i have seen people of today are much smarter much clearer than it was in my generation i'm talking about 88 when i passed from uh, engineering uh, so but but my aspiration evolved over period of time that that is important right uh, i mean you may have some idea some thought but the key is again how do you evolve it and that's what uh, monisha i've been doing uh, building on my aspiration uh adding on to it uh, when i realize that this is what the world is changing around me and again for me that is the key monisha that's wonderful ajay and uh, you know now if i were want, wanting to correlate um, ayushi because you have a lot of your juniors here uh, today uh some of our prospective uh, students or their parents who joined us but so is is there when you chose first and foremost i think on everybody's mind uh, is that what was on your mind when you were choosing a college i mean what was what was it that you really wanted to do uh so my aim was all my aim had has always been computer science for sure i was never as quite contrary to ajay i was not at all interested in electronics i mean i can't even even today i can't even <laughs> understand the circuit but yes i always knew that uh, i wanted to do computer science so what i was looking for was a college that was very good in the field that i am looking for that is computer science and nit had been in the field of education for 
uh, more than 25 years and i was really impressed by that fact that they uh, since the time that computer science was not as as it is now it has been in that field and i'm sure that when uh, that when i joined nit that it will provide me the best platform for computer science so that that is what i had in mind when i joined nit but uh, but again you know going going by what we were discussing ayushi uh, when you know this whole thing about the je and uh, being able to prepare many years in advance to be able to get to a college at the end, today you graduated uh, uh, from a college which uh, to many is probably not uh, not top of the class because of the fact that it's not an iit it's a private college and but at the same point in time you are at an organization with uh, which is the best in uh, its domain and also you are at a role which is a very niche role so is there a connection between uh, choosing a college and uh, getting um, a job which is uh, a grade top of your class along with a role which is complementing that top of the class yes definitely there is a connection especially in nit i mean it's from my personal experience that uh, it was it was the opportunities that i got during my engineering which has led me to be where i am today it was not easy to get uh, you know placed in ibm and it's okay even if you get placed in ibm but then to standing out to stand out of the crowd you need to have a certain you know you need to make match match a certain standards and for me uh, i did not think at that time whether uh, it was iit nit or anything i thought that uh, i want to be have a platform which will give me enough uh, breathing air and enough opportunity to learn what i want to learn it was not like i was just sure that i want to do computer science engineering but in computer science engineering there are still a lot of things that you can do so that direction in my life was given by nit and the opportunities that it presented me for me that was uh, because it was each student each batchmate had their own you know kind of attention and the opportunity for whatever they want to choose i know my batchmates who are doing some other things and they are doing really good at it and they got similar opportunities in the college itself so what what really inspired uh, what really pushed me was that the array of uh, things that we could do at nit and yes definitely there is a connection to that because it certainly gave me direction in field of data science okay so uh, you know ajay you spoke of course about your journey you had aspired to get into something and and you moved into something a little different so uh, was there a particular uh, person or an incident or uh, anything which really influenced that change in your path or influenced your decision yeah absolutely i mean uh, at each point of time uh, one is of course i look towards lot of role models uh, in in wherever i work right uh, of course many of us look at our parents as a role model when we are studying right maybe our faculties our professors uh, right and as you go into organization so they were some of the role models i have learned a lot from them uh, they have guided me and, and that's very important as you work and go into corporate career look at some role models uh, which inspires you which aspires you look at inspiration for them uh, look at direction from them because it's extremely important right that when you go to a corporate at times it's a jungle it's a huge place right uh, with very very uh, while it's an exciting place to work in but then you get pulled in lot of direction so how do you streamline it i had i was lucky enough to have lot of good mentors who guided me uh, in terms of choices uh, and and that's very interesting and i would like to give some of my examples uh so as i said i joined my startup right the first startup after my master then i joined c dot and interestingly i joined a group uh, maybe which was the least interesting to people in the whole of c dot so a lot of people used to see i mean this is boring work this is not interesting work now when you join a corporate world it puts a lot of peer pressure onto you because people look at so called exciting or glam kind of things i mean i'm working on this and that there was a lot of peer pressure right uh, which happens when you join the world uh, so what i did was within four months of joining i started looking at what can i read more there was oltp there was ingress database i started reading it 
but i was not going anywhere uh, i mean i was young guy i was a lot of energy to do a lot of things i felt uh, i am not moving anywhere my career is not moving anywhere then i had a conversation with my father one day and then he said that do whatever you are doing do it to the best of your abilities and i'm sure you will be able to do well in any other area so i so what i did was i changed i started whatever i was reading i dropped it i i started working on whatever i was doing it and i did it to the best and within 3 months 6 months i felt i was doing very well people felt that and you can see that in people things now 5 years passed by it was not an exciting group so called it was not a in thing it was not the core work at c dot right after 5 years i got an opportunity in a call processing which is heart of a telecom switch right everyone aspires to work on that so i said i said i'll not go and uh, join that team because i am doing well i am growing i have a good recognition uh, but the new boss asked me that why don't you come i told him i don't know anything about it right he said i know that you done well in one area and i'm confident you'll be able to do well in second area and i jumped into it it was difficult initial 3 to 6 months because uh, i joined as a manager and people would look up to me that ajay can you help solve this i am not even able to understand what you are saying how can i solve it right so initial 3 to 6 months was tough i used to sit in the evening from about 5 to 9 pm in office just mm-hmm. reading the software code reading the documentation mm-hmm. building my understanding so that was my second big career move right and and believe me that changed a lot of things for me and lot of people i am sure would have said no to that opportunity because it involved a lot of hard work it involved a lot of changes Uh, it was a complete change, one eighty degree shift from what I was doing earlier and what I was. So I mean, there have been a lot of such changes, and there'll be more changes. I'll talk about it. But the willingness to change, being open, uh, willingness to dig deep, uh, work hard. I I would say that is extremely critical. Yeah, Monisha. So Ajay, uh, you know, students. Of course, now Ayushi has just moved from a student mode into into fresh into the industry, but. what are the things that they should you know uh, focus on now for example we have students who do uh, who major in computer science or ece or uh, biotechnology these are three of the majors that we have at nit university each of those has further specializations is there any uh, now that technology is evolving and you've been uh, you've been right in the thick of it for the last so many years uh are there certain uh, quick fixes or tips that you would want to give to students that they should quickly pick up which is going to uh, benefit them for the maybe the next 3 years or 4 years going forward all right uh, so first of all technology is changing so fast uh, so i don't know if anyone can predict 3 uh, years 4 years down the line we've seen pandemic right it has changed plans for everyone right uh, i mean what people thought of they'll be doing this year i mean it is entirely different but what i'll advise and again is keep it simple uh, first of all i always aspire and maybe uh, later uh, ayushi can also jo- uh, add on to that is keep your fundamentals very clear right it does not matter whether you are doing biotech you are doing electronic you are doing electrical you are doing computer science whatever you are studying do it to the best of your ability have a, a very clear so if you are doing electronic you you have to understand nand gate you have to understand what is a half adder and so on and so forth what is a moore's law and so on right and stick to your fundamentals so i always believe uh, after my 30 years of experience if you are good in one area uh, your fundamentals are clear and you have ability to learn new things you can so uh, so the first is uh, stick to your fundamentals right then the second is ability to learn and this is what i would say a uh, excellent institute like niit university will teach you uh, will tell you something about learning how to learn this is what believe me even after 30 years i am still learning lot of things right? as i migrate to new area so i was a, a pstn guy then i worked into a voip area then i worked into wireless 3g 4g 5g now i am working in ai uh, mo- mobile cloud uh, analytics and so on right now this is i i, I would have never imagined third 10 years back i would be doing this so again the uh, ability to learn newer areas and keeping your fundamentals safe so when i when i interview people when i recruit people this is what i look at right are they clear in fundamentals uh, uh, take lot of initiative see what happens is when you join a job some of the jobs could be very verticalized so you could be doing uh, something very plain right but how do you look left how do you look right what kind of initiative do you take right initiative to learn new things which is not part of what you do 
so i would say these are uh, some of the very simple things uh, that one has to do and uh, we can't plan for 4 5 years to be honest right uh, but what happens is when you join engineering for example you join computer science engineering you took a bet you said this is what i'm going to do for 4 years i think to do it to the best when you join a job for example i used to do wonderful things in a great company iconic company like ibm working as a data scientist uh, so get into that do the best that's her next bet you never know after few years she'll get into something else so that would be so as you keep moving uh, make sure you do the best to that particular work but again stay basic to the fundamental work hard uh, and we say that uh, love what you do that is extremely important i think that's a that's a very very important point uh, ajay and for all of us who have you know been been working for the last so many years i think uh, the love for the work that you're doing uh, yeah. not just for the organization or the role that you're into is um, is the first thing that we should learn and especially right. i think in technology like you're saying today there could be uh, one kind of software which is prevalent and maybe two years later that could be completely outdated and there could be something else so it is it is a constant learn and uh, a constant upgrade what i see but uh, if you were to if you were to you know talk about some of the qualities that students today who are going to be graduating in the next 2 right. to 4 years so as to speak what what are those qualities that they should have to be able to continue to adapt to um, um, you know, changes in technology right right so first of all is the attitude right attitude you all would have read a lot of messages attitude is everything believe it is everything it is a lot right attitude i would say openness to learn passion and energy level right so once you have uh, and all these why when i am talking about all these which are non technical to some extent because technical i am sure you all are good in your subject and i will not even question that as long as your foundations and basic things are good build a passion and energy level and why i am saying all that is you will need all that when you want to learn certain things right your college journey may end now uh, you some of you may go ahead and do more education but these are some of things analytical ability i i uh, give a lot of weightage to analytical ability for example when i am interviewing someone uh, it's not about whether he gives me answer right or wrong that is just one part of the problem point right the key is that is he or she uh, take me to the path of answer right so what is the journey towards the answer right is he able to think so sometimes i may give him a, a tricky problem just to give an example and uh, i mean so when i interview people i ask here what is the role of a scheduler in an operating system right what is the real time operating system uh, a lot of people will be able to answer right these are basic questions then i ask here if you have to build a scheduler for a real time operating system how will you do that right so, so now people have to start thinking what are the properties of real time operating system and what what do you need as a scheduler in a real time so then i see i mean are they able to think Uh, they may not be able to give me answer but are they ask me questions right when you go to a job uh, you don't have all the answers you can always go to net search it and you have to build a solution right the key is uh, what are your analytical ability what are your learning abilities are you a team player when we work in organization we work in a group of 100 group of 200 and larger team right so how do you work with people these are some of the soft skills i aspect i would say that are extremely important Uh, right uh, of course when i was college some of these i will not understand maybe i will not appreciate uh, but as you get ready and maybe i used to can add on to this so when you get into corporate level at all then you realize that some of these are extremely important for you to succeed as a person that's that's a very fair point and ayushi if you were to draw that you know comparative that in in college was there anything that you did or you wish you could have probably done a little bit more better which could have given you uh, you know these skills a little bit more in abundance that you than you already have so uh, first of all coming to the things that i did uh, so coming to those things that uh, some of the soft skills that ajay mentioned like i was not uh, as he said that in college you are not conscious about such things like you have to learn this particular thing for your career so it was just me trying to do the best of the situation in trying to get into the opportunities that i like so those kinds of skills kind of got 
through the process it got uh, enhanced like my communication skills be it my uh, organizing skills we i took part in different clubs and we did organizing uh, in a lot of events so some of these skills kind of got built in the process now so it's all about doing what you love as ajay said so i just took the opportunities that i thought i would love working on and in the process i just built the skills that were kind of needed in my uh, job so i hit the ground running as you say and uh, for the things that i could have done better i certainly could have taken uh, data science courses a lot more seriously at that time <laughs> because the reason why i'm saying that is i every day you have to learn that is there is no uh, doubt about that even now i'm learning about something that i'm doing uh, working on but at that time had i dug deep in, in into the uh, data science courses i could have worked a little less in my job uh, in field of data science so that is something that i could have done at that time what i mean by this is like when you choose your area of concentration the subject that you uh, are learning will not cover the latest things or will not be uh, will not cover all the things that are going in the market so if you are choosing a concentration you need to like dive deeper into it and understand get the real time you know get the latest uh, knowledge of that field is what i i should have had knowledge in my college so if uh, students can benefit with that uh, that is my question Ajay, okay. you are part of so many panels where you interview, you know, young students. Uh, I I know from my own from my own experience that you you uh, lead the right. organization in going for campus interviews, selecting students, and interact so often with uh, you know young minds fresh out of campus. Uh, what is now just like an insider view? What is your uh, you know what's what's your cheat test? I mean. why would you give a pass or a fail to a student is it on the basis of the kind of college that person's coming in ya yeah, marks somebody has got better marks or somebody has got uh, maybe an internship or specialization is there something that you know you you want to recommend yeah yeah very very pertinent question as students pass out in the final year so i would say i mean uh, it's it's a sum total of lot of factors right so for me it is not a single factor Uh, what i look at in an individual is um, uh, i mean uh, uh, what is knowledge uh, does he know the fundamentals whatever he is doing so let's say if i am evaluating for a software job uh, uh, dr sudeep sanyal has joined in uh, nisha you on hi professor sudeep how are you you're on uh, mute you're on mute i think kavil you will have to unmute oh. You are still on mute. Uh... Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, good so, evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, Professor. We are having a very, uh, a very interesting conversation where uh, Ajay, who is our guest for today, and uh, he is the uh, VP Engineering at Altran, and now we have Ayushi, who is our own alum, and we have you. who is going to help us put all of this in perspective from an academic uh, you know uh, perspective but going back to what ajay was saying before uh, you joined in i was trying to find out from ajay that he interviews so many young students and uh, selects them for campus uh, placements or rejects them so what is his cheat sheet i mean uh, what does he what does he uh, select or reject people on the basis of is it the name of the college or is it their marks or is it their specialization uh, ajay you were saying something yeah yeah so what i look at uh, when i look at individual it's some total of lot of factors the first being how are he, how is he in his fundamentals so let's say if, I, if he's doing electronics and i ask him some electronics question this fundamental is clear uh, i may ask a direct question i'll ask a lot of indirect questions like a club two or three questions so is he able to um, i mean has he just uh, read it or is he able to give me a clear answer which shows the depth of his knowledge i would say that is one second again is i talked about analytical abilities right uh, so sometimes he's not able to maybe tell me the answer but if you ask me a question i give him hints i give him direction is he able to take the path so that is extremely important because in in your working life 
you'll uh, you'll have to navigate so is he able to navigate the path in a corporate world that would be second other aspects is of course important uh, are communication skills is he very good and clear in communication is he able to articulate his thoughts clearly uh, and is he able to understand my questions very clearly is he confident is he clear is he not bluffing because i can tell you i mean a lot of time uh, uh, some people are honest if i ask them question they say i i don't know the answer it may happen that out of seven question he's not able to answer the question it does not mean i'll reject him i see how honest was he because i've seen people at times they will start bluffing in my view that is not a right thing to do in the interview because in general interviews are able to figure out i can honestly tell many times i last question i don't know answers to be honest right but i am able to figure out if uh, the candidate is giving me the right answer because i will cross question and i will see the confidence level right so interviewer may not know the answer but he'll be able to figure out a lot of them i would say uh then uh, uh, what kind of body language is he demonstrating what kind of experiences he is talking about uh, whether at college at past things his percentage i won't say some some people may think that if he's got 65 or a 60 or a 70 he is in or out no for me it's never it's some total of all the things right so sometimes let's say uh, there are some uh, uh, candidates who are clear yes sometimes they are clear uh, no and sometimes they are in between border line and that border could be pretty wide it's not a, a very thin line then some of the other aspects come into picture i mean is he good in communication is he uh, a confident person is he being honest is he being realistic has he learned in the life different things uh, does he show initiative because you talked about internship right now it depends uh, uh, what level of internship people are doing so monisha at nit is it a Two to three months, or is it six months internship? So you know, uh, Ayushi, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what is so special about the internship, and what do we we call it as an industry practice at NIT University? But Ayushi, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how it is such an important part of the curriculum? Yeah. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, it is a six months internship to answer your question, Ajay, and it is. it is a very integral part of uh, you know uh, having completing my uh, completed my engineering because it's kind of like every uh, you go into the job people expect you to you know like uh, do everything and they don't you know like they don't give you uh, time to learn or time to read or time to get up to the speed so what internship does is you as a tag of intern you get a certain kind of you know uh, benefit in the way ki okay he or she is learning so that is the time where you put in all your extra efforts in learning so that when you are actually an employee you will be at the same level as others you will be treated as the same level as others and then you will be expected to do uh, at the same level or even better so internship has definitely played a very important role in my life and it is because then that was the time that was the buffer time where i could hit the ground running uh, you you uh, in the inter- it's it's okay when you when the university uh, when the sorry the company will come for placement as an intern interview they might you know forgive you for not doing things but during the internship what is your performance how you are performing how you are taking initiative how you are uh, you know eager to learn that is what gives you the placement offer ultimately right so okay. uh, uh, so internship what is a very very important and very uh, good uh, thing that our college does is this in the last semester as our industry practice and this is the time you have to you know prove your worth in your company basically and just show that you can achieve a lot more excellent ayushi so so this is a great uh, monisha i mean the kind of program yeah. that you have called industry practice i think this adds value for me i mean a short term training does not really add a lot of value but when you are in a significant time in a company you learn not only the technology uh, you actually deliver a product uh, and besides this you also learn about company how the corporate world works what is it that you are expected to do day in day out so learning uh, during that internship is extremely critical we should take it seriously as ayushi also talked about i mean it you can treat it as a job your first job i would say that is that significant so when i interview people i also look at what kind of time they spent in the company what all did they learn right technology is one aspect which is extremely important uh, what kind of processes they want to understand and so on so 
in my view coming back to your question monisha uh, for me it is some total of all sometimes people feel that it's only the technical aspects which are important it is extremely important uh, i mean that sets a bar to you that you have to cross obviously right but when when you cross that a lot of people will cross that then how do you make choices then there are other aspects which come in right Uh, uh so your marks are also important it does not mean that someone who has less marks will not be selected not really it, it, in my view it's a sum total of everything which defines whether i am going to select an individual or not monish thank you ajay and uh, ayushi and you know especially to you since you've been on on the other side of the table just a little while ago uh it's very natural for students to sometimes you know get dejected once they get rejected in an interview or not being able to crack a, a so called better organization as compared to a not so better organization from their own perspective so what are those few things that they should look at uh, both from industry practice and in a, a full time placements when they are uh, when they are giving interviews or when they are preparing themselves uh, yes so it is it is very natural to get you know demotivated when you get rejected for an uh, interview uh, it you know it's the part of the process you have to get rejected rejected so that you you know kind of understand the process so even i got rejected for to, before getting into ibm i got rejected for two interviews they uh, now there was multiple reasons there's this not just uh, the reason that i was not capable that they did not give me job it was because they were expecting something different from the student than the uh, uh, skill said that i had so there can be different reasons for getting rejected that is not the end of the world i mean uh, there are multiple companies there are uh, you know in the ranking perspective maybe that's not the best company uh, it's not the big four uh, com- consultancy firms maybe but then it's it's still an opportunity and if you do best in the opportunity that is given to you it's uh, there is no better way even going to a big firm but not giving your best would be just part of being the crowd but going to a firm which you thought was not the best and doing your best there will set you apart from the crowd so you never know maybe after 2 to 3 years down the line you might switch your job or you might go into the company that you think is the best one but then that is still it, the basic idea is still the same you have to make the best of uh the opportunity there you have to prove your worth at the end of the day like and the say uh, my friend just uh, just to share an informal story my very close friend she thought that pwc was the only firm that she wanted to get in and when she got rejected there she cried and she was like now what will happen and everything and then she got into uh, another firm and now she is at a point where she is managing multiple projects as i say so i mean it's it's not the end of the world she got up she moved on and that that is how it is yeah and and maybe ayushi i think you brought about a good point i added when i was in engineering uh, the first company which came up and i sat for was lnt uh, and it was great company for electrical engineer and i was confident right i'll get through and a lot of people raise expectation and so on i couldn't clear the interview and i was rejected solidly and uh, but then you have to stand up on your feet right uh, how do you how do you get through the dejection as you rightly said and then next company came uh, and i was all down i mean i felt should i appear for the interview or not uh, it was siemens and i appeared and everything went right and i was selected so i mean it's part of life as you rightly said and and this true for all the students as you get into a career there will be ups and downs uh, but the key is how do you how do you uh, get over to it each time and in 30 years i had a lot of such experiences up and down more ups and less of down i would say i've been lucky enough uh, but each down how do you rise up is very key okay moni thank you so much ajay thank you ayushi so uh, what i think i did hear both of you uh, unanimously talk about was the fact that there isn't any one particular thing that either organizations look at nor do nor should students look at while choosing a, a career or a job and it should be a combination of a lot of factors and uh, yes there will be dejections and rejections 
but i think the strength of our character lies in the fact that how well we are able to get up and how soon we are able to kind of you know jump back and on our feet uh, this brings me to you professor sudeep as an academician as uh, right now you are heading technology for uh, niit university according to you what's so special about our curriculum where we are ensuring that it's updated given the fact that technology is ever changing and we've heard ajay speak about the fact ajay has been part of the technology uh, sector since the last 30 years i mean you you've seen it all as an academician from from the other side of the table so as an institution where do you think what what is it that we are doing which is uh, making a difference well like as uh, ajay was saying that the industry looks at certain things for example it will not only look at uh, how technically strong you are but also whether you are versed with the latest things or not that's one thing and then in addition to that whether you have a very well rounded character or not that's another thing i mean your communication skill or how well you can handle the pressure or how honest you are and all sorts of things so those are the things that any recruiter would be looking at and looking at it very very closely and that's exactly what we do with our students that is from a very technical point of view and personally one thing that i believe in is that since technology is evolving very fast so not only should the student be capable of uh, handling technical problems but he should also be capable of picking up new technology on his own i think that is a very necessary skill in today's market because anybody who can do that very quickly that is pick up new technology on their own that i think they are ahead of the others because new technology will come i mean whatever you learn today is going to become obsolete 5 years down the line new technology will come and people will have to learn on their own because 5 years down the line you won't have a teacher who will be hand holding you and uh, telling you how to do things so and that is what we do over here we train them not only on the latest things but through the projects which are built into our curriculum in a very strong way we actually tell them that look this is a place where you need to identify your problem and figure out what technology is to be used pick up that technology and go ahead and solve the problem so they get into the habit of picking up technology on their own and they also become very familiar with whatever is currently available so we have got a variety of projects so that's one thing and of course we keep updating our curriculum all the time that's another thing which happens almost constantly and as ayushi was saying that the ip is built into our curriculum so that also prepares the students in a very, in a very big way but beyond all that i mean that was the technical part but what our curriculum has in addition to all these is there are a lot of humanities and other courses there are a lot of extracurricular or co curricular activities there are lots of clubs and clusters and things like that and they all in some way or the other contribute to um, rounding off the personality and also in some way making that person more honest because he gets so many opportunities so he sees that okay even if he doesn't succeed in one opportunity he is likely to succeed in another one and that sort of also prepares him mentally for the forthcoming rigor of placement where some rejections and dejections are almost inevitable because it might be your day on some day but another day just might not be your day and things might not work your way hmm. that happens to everybody but that's something that the students learn to recognize even before they hit the placement scene so that is the sort of preparation which our anu program actually provides to all the students which in a way is very useful because you can have your iits etc which are too centered on the technical part of it so but if you want well rounded of i mean uh, okay i'll tell you where i'm coming from uh, just a couple of days back i was looking at a report which had sort of gathered people who had an iq of more than 140 and my new iq of more than 140 means that they are practically in the genius level and they actually track what happened to those people 
like when they were in the college their iq was tested it was 140 plus and so on they talked in the mensa max test and everywhere they did, they had a fantastic academic career what happened after that was that many of them actually never did anything very really substantial on the other hand if you look at somebody like uh, you know uh, the chairman of pepsi nui so when she was studying for her mba in i am ahmedabad she was actually rated as a very average student and she went on to head one of the biggest corporations of, in this world so we are talking about a very different quality over here which is not just the technical quality i'm not saying that the technical quality is unimportant yeah. it must be there but it has to go well beyond technology only that is what is important and that is the sort of rounding off which happens in a curriculum like nu in an environment like nu particularly since we say that okay i mean hostels are mandatory i mean it has to be a residential program you cannot live outside the campus so you know so you get embedded into the system 24 cross 7 and that has its own effect that has its own value it definitely brings along a transformation in the person so the raw person who comes in at the end of class 12 just having passed his school and the person who finally graduates out from this university are two entirely different persons the maturity level changes okay a lot of other things change and i'm sure ayushi would agree with that that it's not just the maturity yeah. level but several other things probably change but maturity level definitely changes so that is an a very important part of what is happening at nu today so basically that's what i wanted to say so maybe i'll add monisha uh, i mean what professor sudeep said is extremely important and i'm glad nu university does that Uh, Steve Jobs used to say that one should go in for a multidisciplinary program, studies program, and and it it makes you a more rounded person, I would say, and that's what the uh, professor was saying. And for just to tell you, I mean, he went in for a uh, calligraphy course, and we know that changed the history of Apple, the way it looked, and uh, I mean, that's what he used to talk about. So I mean, it is great. And and if you look at when I talked about when I look at selecting people, so technical is just one aspect, but there are other aspects which I touched upon. i am glad that nu uh, you look at that with a high weightage and you are already doing that so pretty happy on that uh, monisha and professor sudeep and ayushi is an example of that i can see her the way she talk i mean she shows uh, much more maturity uh, uh, in terms of years of experience i am i am very happy for that uh, excellent ayushi and Thank curiously you. if i may add one thing if you look at the new education policy that our modi government has just brought out they have now started talking about the same things yeah there is less of emphasis on technology there is more emphasis on these other things now so right. you can see that paradigm shift happening but in nu it was happening even 10 years earlier right I mean, right this has been the philosophy of nu right from the day one right right so uh, professor uh, sudeep uh, with this whole you know emphasis on digital learning from an academic pers- perspective uh, do you what are your comments on digital learning is it as good as classroom is it better uh, give us a give us like a quick okay. uh, comment on one that one thing which i said was that if i talk about pure technology then probably these are more or less the same but uh, what the students are probably definitely missing is the campus and that campus experience that is just equally important and that is the part which is probably missing when we go totally digital because each student is sitting in his or her own home and uh, one the concentration levels are probably a little lower when you are at home i mean there are too many distractions when you are in the class the number of distractions is much less I and mean, the physical environment of the class actually brings in that difference but apart from that that other experiences you cannot really simulate that i mean we are trying to create those things in nu when so uh, right now the nu digital is going beyond mere teaching we are also trying to build in group activities we are trying to build in things like clubs kavi shala or rang manch and all those things <laughs> we are trying to bring it within the nu digital platform itself now 
because now that the platform has stabilized out pretty well for as far as basic teaching learning is concerned so we are trying to extend it now we are trying to deliberately bring in at least those clubs which are possible where we can have participation online similarly the photography club they are also trying to organize things online and we are trying to put it on the platform itself so we are using the platform for doing all those things so we are trying to extend the ambit of edu digital now it's not just mere teaching learning but it is trying to go a little beyond that but in that dimension i think we still have a long way to go i mean we certainly cannot do a athletics meet in a digital mode <laughs> not yet not yet yeah but i'm sure uh, you know technology uh, specialists like ajay will say that i'm sure very soon uh, that's also going to be very possible Yeah, well, Ajay, yeah. you know yeah. as as a specialist do you see a difference in this whole um, digital uh, learning pre pre covid post covid the whole uh, bit so i would say there are two parts to it right one is uh, i mean we humans adapt very quickly and very fast to changes in general right look at pandemic i mean who would have imagined that uh, all the institute would be going uh, digital learning or online learning 100% i mean similarly in the corporate who would have imagined we would go 100% work from home and still have a productivity levels of 98 or 99 if someone would have asked me i would have said not possible but within a month we could do that right and things are working uh, i mean in my personal view they are not as efficient as they could have been when you are face to face as professor said that you can do a lot of things on your own but then there are interaction skills uh, so let's say i am face to face with 10 of my colleagues and i am trying to solve a problem maybe i can do it in 10 hours if i am at home it may take 12 hours because there are other challenges when you are face to face the human interaction uh, uh, this is what we live for right that is much easier but having said that as i said we all uh, people have adapted very well and this is what is about transformation how do you adapt how do you transform how do you look at new medium Uh, so from us from that perspective i think it has uh, take, taken up a new challenge and it is working pretty well and i am uh, 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 i i've seen it happening and i'm pretty happy to see uh, how it has turned out to be but i still miss meeting people i would have loved to have this face to face uh, any absolutely. day absolutely absolutely and we will love to host you ajay the moment yeah. things are back uh, on track but yeah. um, ayushi uh, you wouldn't have been happy in this situation if you were a final year student or were you on campus and completely learning digitally definitely not that's what uh, i mean you cannot simulate the campus walk yeah <laughs> after the classes you go out and you have a walk in our beautiful campus i mean i mean it's just a wonderful opportunity lost because uh, i would have been really really sad if i was home uh, and not at campus and even now i just find you know uh, reasons to come back to the campus like any time <laughs> so uh, definitely you cannot simulate everything i i know it will not academically affect you that much just take more time but then otherwise yes uh, that is how it is it is a pandemic we have to deal with absolutely it absolutely no but i i think all our students are missing the campus uh, like all of us missing getting back to work and being in you know in a situation where you're face to face with your colleagues and are uh, involved in day to day transactions rather than just speaking to a machine however much you can't make it very uh, personalized so uh, with this we are coming to the end and i'll just quickly take closing comments from everybody starting with you professor sudeep uh, of course today we've spoken about the emerging trends and how to prepare for a career in technology what would be your uh, closing comments or advice to Uh, to the students who are going to be listening in two parts one where we are saying that if we want to prepare ourselves then we have to keep at it keep practicing i think that's the basic thing that uh, we have to keep doing and we have to make the best use of our time so over here the best use of our time is that keep practicing whatever problem comes huh? so we need to find ways uh, different ways of looking at the problem solving it and keep doing that problem solving the more we practice the better we become and that's a very old adage and i'm just repeating that right and uh, let's just wait for the campus to reopen let's keep our fingers crossed <laughs> i think that would be 
best thing to say absolutely thank you so much uh, professor sudeep uh, ajay wh- what would be your closing comments and your advice to students who are um, in college about to graduate have just entered college i mean given the fact that we are all uh, you know wanting to be part of technology and want to make it very recession proof what would be your comments on that right so i'll, I'll give a couple of examples right one is the problem solving that uh, professor sudeep talked about so look at problem solving for example i'll give a simple example of uber right so it was trying to solve a problem right it said that uh, when i book a taxi today i do not know when taxi wala will come so it said okay i'll have a user interface you can track pixel by pixel then second was that when you sit in the taxi you haggle for certain thing and so on now he said here we'll make you sit in the car and walk out when you reach your destination paytm or your credit card will pay for it so it's a problem solving that a company is trying to do similarly look at amazon they said here we will we'll build the largest bookstore right uh, and, and so on so they are trying to solve the problem so always look at and it starts from your college a very simple problem that you are solving look at what is the larger goal that is one second is transformation i talked about transformation how i have transformed in last 30 years multiple times and look at companies which transform and companies which don't look at microsoft its ceo is satya nadella right our one uh, proud hyderabadi fellow and i read his book called hit reflect and he talked about how he made transformation in a 30 year old company it was difficult he did that results are there to see next is uh, be uh, curious right einstein used to say that i have no special talent but i am passionately curious and ask a lot of questions i'll give an example when i was in college my second year or third year i i was not asking a lot of question i would always think that what my friend would think i mean he does not know even the basic thing later on i used to ask them and they would also not know the answer then i realized i mean you, you may fool uh, look uh, fool or a stupid kind of thing but ask questions right be curious I mean that is a path to learning, right? Uh, and and finally, I would say, uh, I mean, for a different year graduates, enjoy life also, right? Uh, do not be too much serious, right? Sometimes we keep on thinking a lot. I mean, this is my aspiration. This is what I want to do. I mean, there is whole life to do it. You are still young. You are between what seventeen, eighteen to twenty-one, twenty-two. Enjoy life. Uh, keep keep it very simple. Sometimes we make it very complex. That I want to do this. I want to do that. Keep it very simple. Go step by step. Look at one step at a time i'm sure you'll do a lot of things a lot of wonderful things in life when you grow up when you start working in corporate but keep it simple uh, keep it simple keep it fundamental i'm sure a lot of things good thing will happen to all of you and with that all the best to all the students out there thank you so much ajay and last but not the least ayushi uh, what would be your closing comments and your uh, you know that two piece advice to your juniors uh yes so uh my two piece advice to the juniors were well, uh, juniors will be like as soon as you go to the campus enjoy the campus to the fullest first and then the second would be that uh, look for opportunities do not take any opportunity lightly because you don't know what you have missed so just uh, try everything out try all the things that nu provides you and then decide what you want to do that's for sure but just try everything out do not miss do not regret it later oh i i should have gone for that club maybe i should have been organizing that event maybe i should be on the stage you know do hosting the event so do not uh, regret it later because i did uh, regret a certain things while in college so uh, from experience just telling you grab all the opportunities uh, and uh, you know do all the things that you want to do because it's college that's where you try out everything and then decide on what, then make an informed decision on what you want to do and when you choose just dive deep into that and having said that thank you for inviting me it was a pleasure connecting with you always a pleasure to hear you speak and uh, it it it's a learning for me each time i tell you that it, you're very inspiring and to continue to be inspired by those who are senior to you by those who are junior to you i think that itself is 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 our whole you know evolution on a day to day basis so with that we come to an end and thank you very much to everybody who was listening in now and for those who will be listening to this recording later thank you ajay for taking out time thank you professor sudeep for taking out time for this session today and thanks to tan ayushi we look forward to hosting all three of you in person and uh, thanks once again for your time 
Thank you, Monisha. Thank you for inviting me and wonderful interaction. Nice questions. Thank you very much.